In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My richest gain I count but lost And poor content loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from the 29th chapter of First Chronicles. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from thee, and thou rulest over all. In thy hand are power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank thee, our God, and praise thy glorious name. Here ends the reading. The second lesson is from the Gospel according to St. John, the 18th and 19th chapters. Pilate entered the praetorium again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? 
Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And struck him with their hands. After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no crime in him. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold, your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but... This man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, Why not what I have written, I have written. Here ends the reading. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. We continue our Lenten Discipline Review of the Lord's Prayer as we look at the, do the doxology to the Lord's Prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew, the prayer ended with the seventh petition, but deliver us from evil. In the Roman Catholic denomination, the congregation usually stops the prayer with that petition. In our tradition in the Lutheran denomination, it has been to add the doxology, though the pattern has varied. As I was growing up and the service book and hymnal, the one we call the Red Book, was the main hymnal, in my home congregation in the service of Holy Communion, we sang the doxology to the Lord's Prayer rather than say it. It was not until I attended seminary that I learned why we did this. The doxology to the Lord's Prayer 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Was actually added as a response to the Lord's Prayer by the ancient church. The doxology was based on the lesson we read from 1 Chronicles, where David offered a blessing to the Lord. The doxology acknowledges the kingdom, the power, the glory, and the eternity of God. Each of these is fulfilled through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. This doxology reflects the completion of God's plan of salvation through Jesus' passion, which is the focus of Holy Week, especially on this day of Good Friday. First, the doxology says, Thine is the kingdom. This acclamation is particularly appropriate for Good Friday because Jesus' crucifixion is actually his coronation and installment on his eternal throne and the beginning of his reign as Lord and Savior. In the events from our second lesson, Jesus is repeatedly proclaimed as king, though most of the participants in the events did not intend to do so. Nevertheless, Jesus is shown to be king. We see the words and the actions of the people repeatedly showing Jesus entering his kingdom. Pilate, in his questioning of Jesus, finally proclaims, So you are a king. Even as they scourged him, the soldiers placed on Jesus signs of kingship. They crowned him with a crown of thorns, and they placed a purple robe on him, a sign of royalty. They also noted his kingship, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Just before handing him over to crucifixion, Pilate presented Jesus to the Jewish nation, saying, Behold your king! Pilate also placed a sign over Jesus as he hung on the cross. It said, The King of the Jews. And it was written in Hebrew and Latin and Greek so that all could read it. Once again, Jesus was acknowledged as King. Though they meant it, as an insult and derisively, these actually proclaim the truth that Jesus was a king. Not an earthly king, but king of the kingdom of God. Jesus wore a crown and a kingly robe. Jesus ascended his throne, the cross. He was proclaimed in truth to the world as king. And so, in truth, we proclaim, Thine is the kingdom. Jesus on the cross, though seemingly without power, is actually the most powerful in all of human history. While it appears Jesus was powerless on the cross, he was actually in control, fulfilling all scripture, and was enthroned as eternal king of heaven and earth. When Jesus cried out from the cross just before dying, It is finished! His was not a cry of weakness or surrender, but a confession of strength that he had accomplished the fulfillment of scripture and had entered his kingship. I remember one of my seminary professors teaching us how some Jewish teachers describe death as the ultimate form of weakness. They explained that a dead person was so weak they could not even open their eyes or take a breath. While it appears he was powerless in death, 
We confess in the creed that when he died, Jesus descended to the dead. 1 Peter 3 tells us Jesus there proclaimed that his victory over sin and death was accomplished. God affirmed Jesus' kingship and granted him all power through raising him from death to eternal life. Jesus was anything but powerless. And he was gifted the power of eternal life and lordship. And so in truth we proclaim, thine is the power. On one occasion before his crucifixion at the event called the Transfiguration, Jesus glowed with heavenly glory that was witnessed by three of the disciples. Jesus had shown glimpses of this glory in his ministry through his teaching, healing, casting out of demons, raising the dead, and performing miracles. Deuteronomy 21 said that someone put to death on a tree was under God's curse. This was certainly not seen as glory. We hear of God's curse upon Jesus because Jesus took on our sin. As Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was cursed and suffered the punishment of death because of our sin. But God raised Jesus in glory affirming Jesus was the Son of God. In his resurrected life, Jesus was not limited by time or space. On many occasions, we are told Jesus appeared to people after his resurrection and also vanished from their sight. This was the beginning of the manifestation of the glory of God that Jesus had as the resurrected an eternal Son of God. We confess that Jesus entered into his full glory through his ascension into heaven. In the creed we confess that Jesus ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We also confess that Jesus will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And so in truth we proclaim, Thine is the glory. Jesus was raised and ascended to live and rule eternally. He alone is King for all eternity. We confess in the creed, and His kingdom will have no end. And so, in truth, we proclaim, forever and ever. The doxology to the Lord's Prayer ends with what is and should be an exclamation. Amen! Luther's explanation to the doxology tells us, Amen means, yes, it shall be so. Luther continues to tell us to pray the Lord's Prayer with boldness, assured that God hears our prayer through these petitions. We say Amen because we are certain that such petitions are pleasing to our Father in Heaven and are heard by Him. For He Himself has commanded us to pray in this way and has promised to hear us, as Luther wrote in his. This is why we should strongly and confidently say, Amen. Lord God, we praise you as God, 
and thank you for your grace that has called us as your people. Most holy God, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We thank you for sending your Son, who was obedient unto death, even death on the cross. We praise you that he fulfilled for all eternity your plan of salvation for all creation, and now sits as King, with all power, in glory, at your right hand. We await his coming in glory to judge the living and the dead. Give us the gift of your Holy Spirit to keep us in belief and faith so that we may be prepared for Jesus' return and may be found as his faithful people at his coming. And grant us life in your presence for all eternity. We thank you that your Son, our Lord, taught us how to pray to you. May we always pray these petitions with meaning and understanding. And thank you, Father God, for promising to hear us as we pray. For all these things we say with boldness and confidence. Amen. mournful mountain climb there adoring at his feet mark that miracle of time God's own sacrifice complete it is finished hear the cry learn of Jesus Christ Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father guide it and gather it together, so that we may worship Him in peace and tranquility. Almighty and eternal God, You have shown Your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the church, help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring salvation to people everywhere. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for Bishops Elizabeth Eaton and Michael Reinhardt, for our pastors and other ministers, for all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our pastors and our leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. And help each of us to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism, that God make them responsive to his love and give them new life in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you continually bless the church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. 
Give them a new birth as your children and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep together in one church all those who know Christ as Lord. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church its unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are all consecrated to you by our baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us as one in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave promises to Abraham and his posterity. Hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may arrive with us at the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty and eternal God, Enable us, those who do not acknowledge Christ to receive the truth of the gospel. Help us, your people, to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of your Godhead, and so to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find him who is the author and goal of our existence. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all might long to know you and have peace in you. Grant that, in spite of the hurtful things that stand in their way, they may all recognize in the lives of Christians the tokens of your love and mercy, and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts, so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, 
watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that God, the Almighty and Merciful Father, may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Come, let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. O oh, come, let us worship him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. <laughs> 